between a Japan, Japan and Grimm's fairy tale. I don't know. <laughs> Just imaginative, whimsy, but anyways, yeah, I uh, woke up this morning and I am doing the Tone It Up Girls arm, have his arm routine, a shoulder routine. I'll link it down below for you guys. But I haven't done that in probably a year, that particular routine. And OMG, it is a good one. And I remember when I was doing it consistently, I really noticed a change in, in my shoulder definition. So I think I'm gonna start do, doing it semi-regularly. Um, so yeah, that, that was really good. And oh, I got off to a rocky start this morning because my contact lens, I haven't even like done anything with my hair yet, not that I ever really do, but my contact lens uh, did that sandwich thing where it, folds in half and flips up into your eyelid, oh my God, or in, into your upper eyelid. It's so frustrating. So I spent, first I was like, well, am I gonna be able to get this out? And I went about my morning because I didn't really have time to struggle with it and it was just getting annoying. And I need to put a fresh contact in anyway so I can see. Uh, and eventually I laid down on the floor and just infiltrated my eye with contact lens solution and it noodled out so yeah that was that was kind of a challenge but yeah so i made it through i suffered through the contact lens dilemma got that out and skincare wise i finished my uh, jack black oil free sun guard and i've also finished my exuviance mineral face shield so i've cracked into a fresh um, well, actually, I'm finishing up the Elta MD UV Pure, and that is a mineral-only sunscreen that I love. Personally, I think Elta MD UV Pure looks a little better in terms of the cast than UV Replenish, the newer one. Um, both are water-resistant. In my opinion, sidetrack, the UV Replenish looks the same as the La Roche-Posay Mineral Face and Body Sunscreen. Um, I pointed that out in my High Protection Mineral Sunscreen review, so check that out if you're wondering. But yeah, put Elta MD UV Pure on, that's what I'm currently wearing, and on top I put Color Science Mineral Face Shield, and so that's what I'm wearing. Oh, and I also cracked into a fresh tube of the 3-in-1 Total Eye, the Tinted Eye Sunscreen that I wear around my eyes. 
So I've got a fresh face of newly opened sunscreens this morning. Um, yeah, I love the Color Science uh, Mineral Tinted Shield. I'm going all mineral. Oh, but speaking of the Color Science, you guys were asking about the new mineral face shield that is more bronze, the bronze, the special edition bronze ones. And so check out my Instagram because I put the mineral face shield, the bronze one on. I'm not wearing it currently. I put it on just my face and posted a photograph of me with it on in natural lighting. So go check that out. You can see it actually looks pretty good. If you're going for a bronzy look, in my opinion, I thought it looked really nice. I purposely didn't put it on my neck or arm so you could see the contrast and the tint. And they did it. They really nailed it. It doesn't look terracotta pot. It actually looks like I have a subtle darker skin tone, um, you know, a glow, a, you know, a bronzy look, but it's not, it's not that, that terracotta brown paint look. It really looks nice. And I think it looks nice enough that if you are a darker skin type, you might try it just as your everyday tinted sunscreen. That's what I love about it. It's a sunscreen. It's not a sunless tanner. There's nothing wrong with sunless tanners, um, but this is nicer and then it kind of achieves that. It gives you sun protection that is water resistant and mineral. So I like that about that particular product. So yeah, they really nailed it with their tinted sunscreens. But speaking of my Instagram, you may have noticed I have a little wall art. So let me show you this. Um, yeah, so I recently told you all that I was attempting to get more into taking somewhat more acceptable photos on Instagram. And I have a lot of photos on there that are just flowers and nature scenes. And so this company Mixtile reached out to me and offered to send me or allow me to, to use their service to get some of these pictures. So these are taken off of my Instagram account. And what I really love about this is that they're repositionable and they don't require any putting any holes or any any marks on the wall they're really easy to reposition so if you hate where you put them they're easy to they're easy to to move around so you can kind of create your own little museum gallery wall from your instagram and that is what i have done and you know you can swap it out seasonally and it makes it really easy uh there's an app and you just go into the app and you can upload your photographs from your phone from your or you can even upload them directly from Instagram or from I believe Facebook as well and then they um, then you can choose the frame style they have a few different styles but they're super lightweight and they're able to hold on there really well they don't fall off I've had them on there now for seven days and they haven't budged um, and yeah, uh, it's really nice. You don't have to put holes in the wall. That's what I love. So, uh, I can, uh, I can move them. Oh, and because they're, they're kind of the re-sticky stuff, almost like, uh, uh, those repositioning hooks, but I was nervous that it might, uh, leave a mark on the wall or peel up some of the paint off of my wall. And it has not done that whatsoever. So it's perfect adhesion, just the right amount. Uh, sticky enough to hold, but and not too sticky that you can't reposition. So yeah, I just have some photographs here from our trip to uh, Arizona. And then I just randomly snap photographs of flowers like outside of Whole Foods. Uh, and this was back around uh, October when pumpkins were out. They had those unusual pumpkins, some butterflies, and some digitalis. Uh, which is actually a cardiac medication taken from that all natural little flower there. And yeah, so I have a coupon code for you guys and let me explain how the coupon code works. So down in the description box, there is a link to mixtiles.com. Click that link, it'll take you to the site and then you're gonna go to the right upper corner and there'll be a place for you to add promo code. In the description box of this video, there is a promo code. You apply the promo code there and it'll go ahead and add it to your card. At that point, you can uh, connect to your different social accounts, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, pick your pics, and you're all set. Well, hey guys, what's up? It is the end of the day. I'm headed out to run my errands, go to the grocery store, 
and I, uh, I'm wearing my uh, Hang 10 uh, Sun Rash Guard that I got from Costco. This is so comfortable. Anyways, I was reading an article last night, you guys, that I wanted to share with you all because I thought it was interesting about uh, processed foods. There's a study done at the NIH in like a clinical trials research setting. So not like, you know, real life how people actually eat. But it was a study looking at, they took, I think, 20 people and randomized them to receive a diet that was high in processed foods, ultra processed foods, they called it, versus not processed foods, more whole foods. And uh, they were trying to look at, the, I guess they were looking at differences in eating behaviors and weight gain and that kind of thing. And so the way they did the study was they um, allowed the participants to eat as much as they wanted for an hour of the said meal of either processed food if they were in that group or non-processed food and so they they had three meals a day breakfast lunch and dinner and the meal time was an hour and they were allowed to eat as much as they wanted you know stop when they were full after that in, within the hour and it's interesting in the two weeks of the study the individuals who were consuming the highly processed foods they ate about 500 calories more a day they ate and they ate more quickly they ate faster like they were inhaling their food as opposed to those who ate more whole foods that was really interesting and uh you know you probably just point out the obvious is because processed food sometimes tastes better and that's kind of what they posit in the study the you know the the sodium and things like that you know feed into the reward pathways that you know kind of get into addiction behaviors and whatnot uh but the thing about the diet was uh the foods at, you know at the meal time that were offered they really heavily matched uh the the meals between processed and unprocessed for uh, cal uh overall kind of calorie density and macronutrient breakdown and micronutrient breakdown uh, so, uh, you know, they tried to match that as much as possible. And then they took measures into account of, they measured like respiratory quotient and stuff like that, like measures of basal metabolic rate and energy expenditure and what have you. And in the, at the end of the two weeks, the people who consumed the ultra processed foods ate about 500 calories more a day. And at the end of the two weeks, they gained on average, uh, about one kg one kilogram or 2.2 pounds so uh you know i guess <laughs> processed food tastes good um is what the take-home point of that was i just thought it was interesting because uh you know people are always are like calories are calories and you know calories in calories out that's what leads to to weight changes and i guess you know obviously so in this state case they they ate more processed food calories but you know it really shows that uh you can you can get a lot more i guess out of a lower processed diet uh in terms of your satiety and how much you eat uh, so i thought that was interesting but as an example of what they considered ultra processed um, they, for breakfast, an ultra processed breakfast was a bagel with cream cheese and turkey bacon. I can think of a lot more heavily processed foods than that, that most Americans eat. Um, so I was like, wow, that, you know, if, if somebody, if, if a patient told me they, they were eating that, I, you know, you know, that, that sounds pretty, I mean, it's not the best thing in the world, but there are, I mean, look at breakfast cereal. You know, the breakfast cereals that people feed their children. I mean, no offense, I grew up eating that stuff too. Um, like, it tastes good. But those breakfast cereals, oh my goodness, they're basically like a bowl full, full of candy. Um, heavily processed. So, yeah, I was surprised by that. I mean, it obviously is a processed meal. Uh, you know, processed breads and and cream cheese and then the unprocessed breakfast was oatmeal with skim milk I believe a banana and walnuts so I mean that's what I like to eat <laughs> uh, so that sounds filling to me nuts are really filling but if you're taking people who are used to eating a processed diet like they're gonna be like oatmeal 
Maybe, I don't know. It, it takes, I'd imagine it takes some developing a taste for it. Changing diet is a hard thing to do. Um, you know, it's a hard thing to think about changing your diet. I think people really struggle. All right, so I stocked up in the freezer section at Costco this week. Uh, they got back in this organic daybreak blend of peaches, mangoes, strawberries, and pineapple. This is really good, especially the peach slices in this. They were acquired and frozen at the perfect ripeness. Very good. And then I got the three berry blend as well. And I got, of course, another thing of rice cauliflower. Um, bags and then I've had this before it's really good and and it's also convenient the broccoli florets the steamable bags organic um, so I'm gonna pop those in the freezer and then from Costco I also of course got spinach and I got another thing of asparagus I've rather been enjoying this um, it steams up really quickly just on the stove top as I showed in my little um, relaxing after work hour video from Kroger, I got two heads of your boy Savoy because he was looking fresh. Uh, okay, I also got watermelon at Kroger. The watermelon that I got uh, last week was really good, so I went and got another one. And then I got a baby one as well um, to have. I am running low on bananas in the freezer. For those of you who are new, I let these ripen and then I chop them into thirds and I use a third at a time for in smoothie recipes. I just find it's like the perfect size uh, for smoothies. I also got uh, three white onions and some parsnips and then this bag of classic garden mix, mix from Kroger. Oh, this really satisfies my iceberg addiction. I love iceberg lettuce admittedly. And then I got, uh, what is this? Uh, seven chayote squash. These little containers are mine, by the way. There are just meal prep containers that I reuse in the refrigerator for elevating my produce <laughs> off of the shelves. Um, and then in addition to the chayote, I also got these opo squash again. These are wonderful, much better than zucchini. I, I want to try spiralizing these. I have not tried I've not tried using them on my veggie spiralizer. Of course, the five bags of radishes. And one of you mentioned in the comments that you recently gave the air, the radishes in the air fryer a try, like I showed in my, uh, in my uh, recipe video, and that you, you love them too. And just like me, you're not really a fan of uh, raw radishes. They're, I prefer them baked, honestly. Give them a try. If you're not a fan of radishes, try them baked in the air fryer. They taste almost like a potato. Very, very good. Um, I got a large container of unsweetened Almond Breeze vanilla almond milk, and then I got a small container of unsweetened soy milk. I really like this Simple Truth organic brand. And then I also got a can of unsalted green beans, another little guilty pleasure of mine. And I'm almost, I know I'm gonna run out midweek of Bustello and we cannot have that. So I got Lavazza. Lavazza is a really good good one to, to give a try to if you're a fan of espresso like me. I love, my favorites are Bustello, Lavazza, and Javalia. Uh, and then I also got uh, some Bonza. This was on Ibotta. Ibotta, by the way, is the uh, rebate app that I use uh, to get uh, cash back off my groceries. It's more of a little fun game for me. I mean, it's not like you're ever going to become a millionaire on that thing, but it's fun. And I love Bonza, and so that was on there this week. So I went ahead and got that. I thought it'd be good. It's really good. Um, the last time I had this, it was really good with broccoli. So I think I'm going to have it with that steamed broccoli, and um, I'm going to make some tomato sauce just with. I have some cans of unsalted uh, tomatoes in the in the pantry, so I'm going to just uh, heat up some of that with some garlic and maybe some uh, oregano and I'll just make a quick pasta sauce that'll be good um then you know i need these in my life at all times these are my little dentec easy brushes they are such such a uh gingival saver i really love them they're the perfect size for in between my teeth and good news i really went went wild here. The passion fruit are back back in stock and they look they look extra fresh. I don't know if they're just from a different region or what. Uh, they looked really good. 
So excited for those, because as I mentioned, I'm really exi excited to try the passion fruit on top of watermelon, like all of the cool vegan YouTubers. So yeah, that's what I got. There's my grocery haul. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Check the description box for the mixed house coupon code if you're interested. I also list all my skincare that I showed or mentioned in the video, so check there if you're wondering. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.